today is a super exciting day. The boys have already gotten excited. They spotted our boat from our hotel window. We haven't seen the boat for three weeks. We had to hop off so that they could put the new engine in. Yeah, our brand new boat is once again fully functioning. What's that? Yeah, let's go find the old toys, yeah? <laughs> Honestly, forget how beautiful it is. Like, it even looks better with the sail bag on there. My oh, God. it does. <laughs> For anyone who's new here, welcome aboard our brand new floating home, La Vagabond III. We couldn't be prouder of our custom build and interior design. She's a 60 foot carbon trimaran, well equipped with a master and guest cabin, two heads, my gorgeous galley, saloon and a huge amount of deck space. Not only does she feel amazing ergonomically as our family home, but she really performs out at sea. We can't wait to share what she can do with you this year as we sail all the way to Japan. This sailing mission is going to be so fun. We've got the best crew. We're going up a river in Borneo where there's elephants, there's orangutans, there's the monkeys with the big, long, ugly noses and crocodiles everywhere. So once we see that river, we can leave Malaysia and go up to the Philippines. We're gonna sail the whole of Palawan and I really wanna get into wing foiling. I just learned how to use the foil with Forrest, the last sailing mission we did. So now I've got to add the wing. I realize it's a really, really hard water sport to get into considering like I don't even surf. So I'm so excited. Darwin, did you find your toy you wanted? Yeah, the Lenny, did you find your toys that you wanted? Your watch, okay, great. <laughs> Everyone's happy. <laughs> How are you this morning, Jamie? I'm good. Great. Nice to have you guys on board. Great. Yeah. <laughs> that was Jamie. He's a professional sailor, and for the next couple of months, you guys are going to get to know him and the rest of our crew really well. Jamie's a 187.1 centimetre tall Pisces. He holds the Australian record for hobby horse dressage, and his left ear is just ever so slightly smaller than his right we think he'll fit in nicely. And in these photos, you can see his own sailboat back in Western Australia and his gorgeous girlfriend, Beck. Then there's Forrest, who you've met before, who's also a great sailor. It wasn't always that way though. Back when he was solo sailing and three days into a passage, he fell into his engine bay and soiled his pants. True story. We've all got to start somewhere though, right? He's also a wizard with the camera and such a joy to have around. And then there's the lovely English Ellie who you've met before too, back in the Bahamas. Our children have a slightly English accent and we're blaming Ellie, but we're certainly not mad about it. Ellie used to be a teacher, so she's good with the kids, which is such a relief because our kids can be a lot. For the upcoming season of sailing we had planned, it was important we had a few exceptional humans surrounding us. <gasps> my favorite one. Look at this one. Mm -hmm. Hello everyone. Elaine has asked me to go through the jobs list that I've got. There's been some amazing things that have happened on board. The engine's in. That was the main thing. Yeah, I mean, we've got a, a working engine. That I guess I'll need to triple check that, but I'm very, very confident because there was a lot of people that were very keen and motivated to get that done. 100 million percent correctly. So that's gone in. We've got a new sail bag, which is on. The jib has been sent away and recut by Doyle Sail, so that should be good now. Elena and I took that down, which was, it took forever. I hope that putting it up will be a little bit easier than taking it down and flaking it with just me and her. That was a bit of a disaster. So anyway, the jib's gonna go up and we've also got a new stay sail, which you all know that we exploded in the South China Sea. Um, apart from that, there's a bunch of little jobs that I've got around the place. So over here, that was something that blew off in the South China Sea when the stay sail exploded. And there's a few other things that we need to do, but we could leave the dock tomorrow were we so inclined, which is good. And Ellie's just arrived. Should we reenact us first meeting? Yay! <laughs> I can't do it all today. No, no. It's even better. That's what we normally do here. Yeah. Okay. Both hands. Alright. Breathe in. Success? Hey. It does appear to be working right. now. Which is good and bad, as we've just discussed, because if you can't replicate the problem, 
then it could occur in the future for no apparent reason. So it didn't work for you, Jamie? No. We're just wondering if maybe it wasn't in neutral and there's a neutral, well, we can figure that out. So we've decided that tomorrow we're gonna to take the boat out. So we'll reverse out of here like we did last time and then we'll go into the bay and myself, Elena and Jamie will be the only people on board and we're gonna hoist the jib um, and we need to bring that up and that's actually, it's on the structural force day and it's lashed top and bottom. So that's a pretty intense job. So we're all gonna do that tomorrow. But at the moment, I'm sending Jamie up the mast because we are milking a mainsail halyard. So what's happened is the halyard is kind of twisted and a bit funky, you can see here. Why is that happening, Jamie? Because I keep using the electric winch. Uh, no, nah, it's just electric, well, yeah, but I think just new rope and it's stretched in and maybe the, uh, the outer wasn't super tight to start with. Okay. Maybe when they've done that initial splice, they haven't pulled it, pulled it fully. It's one of the things that the rigger has warned me about. So what are we doing here, Jamie? We're uh, pulling the main halyard out. So we just need to get some twists out of it. Uh, milk so the we've, like... met, we've moused the line and we're yeah. pulling it all through. Yeah, that's right. Are you helping, darling? Yeah. Thanks, mister. No. No? The whole crew and I are just doing a workout outside and I'm about to make everyone an AG1 in my cocktail mixer here because I've accidentally frozen my shaker bottle here. But yeah, we're so happy to be teaming up with AG1 for this episode. These guys are absolute legends. We love what they're doing here. What they're creating is a formula with 75 vitamins and minerals and whole food sourced ingredients so that in our day, if we don't quite eat all the leafy greens and things that we should, this bridges the gap in your daily nutrition. And it comes in these beautiful little travel packs, which we also have stashed away. We've got a whole bunch of these for the sailing season ahead. We're going to some pretty remote places. Uh, we love that it supports your immunity and it's such an easy habit to incorporate. It tastes good, it's super easy to make. You just mix one scoop with every eight ounces of water. So yeah, instead of having to shop around for all the various supplements, because there's so many that you should be taking, I love that it's all just here in one drink. There are antioxidants in here, pre and probiotics adaptogens, it supports brain function, it supports hormone, liver function, definitely your energy levels. And I love a little squeeze of lemon in there too, if you've got a lemon. The flavor's kind of a bit like a green apple, I would say. And if you guys click the link below, they're actually gonna give you 10 travel packs for free today with your first purchase, and also a year's supply of their vitamin D3 and K2 drops. Definitely take advantage of that, and we hope you become as obsessed as we are. Have you tried an AG1? All right, let me know what you think. Merci, mademoiselle. Initial thoughts? That's nice. What's the plan today, Cap? So we've just left the marina and we're coming out here. We're going to anchor up for however long it takes us to hoist the jib. I've said this a bunch of times, but Elena and I, it was very difficult for us to flake. But the flaking was the most difficult part, so we think that it seems as though we're just hoisting it and hanking it on, as it were, that this should potentially go a lot easier. We might even fly the Code Zero today, mate. What do you reckon? Um, and then we're gonna go for a sail. Yeah, so today we're doing a little bit of sail tweaking, just getting everything perfect before we set off and go to some really remote places. Ellie took one for the team today. She stayed back on land with the kids whilst we do all this stuff. I actually really wanted the day with them because yesterday I spent the whole day just cooped up in our hotel room doing work, video stuff for you guys. Super excited for the season of sailing ahead. We're calling it season three of La Vagabond because we've got three hulls now. We went from one to two to three. Not sure what's next, maybe a, maybe a spaceship, who knows? But um, if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do so you don't miss out. We've got lots of, lots of amazing things coming. Hey, looking beautiful, Jamie. What are we doing? So we're just gonna go down and check the engine. We're just out uh, our first test run and we can't get full revs on the motor. We're only getting 17, 1800. So we're just gonna go see if it's a cable problem or something else. The engine we found out was in overdrive, which is a pretty nifty way of getting extra propulsion. So what happens is if you slip it into reverse and then forwards again, the propellers lock into position, producing more torque and giving better efficiency and economy at lower speeds or when motor sailing. 
Once I found out I even had an overdrive, it's been pretty easy to slip in and out of. Yeah, yeah. <gasps> no! You guys, we're in a bit of a pickle. There's two, or I don't know how many, but there's some baby birds <laughs> in the furla. We don't know what to do with them, because as soon as we touch the nest, I don't know, maybe the mama will abandon them, but we also can't leave it here, and we need the furla. There's a whole load of cuteness. And confusion. This looks nasty, don't you reckon? A bit Blair, Blair witchy at the same time. I've never liked this decoration. We can make this the nest. While well, she'd been winning plaudits for her ornithology, I'd been selling Winnebago's to less healed retirees. <gasps> oh my goodness. Lenny and Darwin. <laughs> I'll just put them here for now. Mum is not happy. Yeah, what are you doing? Just keeping an eye on Jamie Boat. We took down the mainsail halyard yesterday, soaked it out and made it longer and made the outside part of the rope. You can hoist the main in a minute. What's a compressed version of what you just said? We took the mainsail halyard down to do some work on it because it was twisted. And in order to do that, we had to remove a pin at the top. And we've done the work and now he's replacing the pin at the top with the mainsail halyard back through it. What's no, happened? Not, not yet. We might have to go up and lash the top just so we're not so we can get that power off and then while I'm up there you can be down here and set it or something. I left the boys outside in the sun for most of the day. It's a two-man job what they're doing. It did help out a little bit, but I've been hiding out inside mostly. I just did a count of all the stock we have on board, all the food, like canned food and rice and stuff that lasts a very long time because we want the boat full of that stuff before we go because we've got a marina and it's a lot easier to carry the heavy stuff from the dock to the boat rather than the beach to the dinghy to the boat. But yeah, the boat's pretty much bare at the moment so Ellie and I are going to go for a huge food shop tomorrow. And we usually run out of fresh food every one to two weeks. There's going to be five adults on board. So yeah, we'll be lucky to last two weeks without having to find a little market along the way somewhere and just getting some, some real food. of things whilst we sail. Firstly, our new app, Sea People, that we track all of our trips on in real time and use to connect with all of you shoreside ocean lovers, has moved into beta testing. So many of you are already using and loving the app, which is so cool to see. If you'd like to also become a beta tester, I'll pop the link in the description box below for you to join the waitlist today. And hopefully we'll see you pop up in our map soon. And we wanted to give a shout out to Sunrise Yacht Products, who we actually met at the boat show in Annapolis a few years ago. They make the highest quality trampoline nets with a material that's actually stronger than steel by weight, yet super light, which suits the style of boat we have. We chose the one inch black Dyneema with a finished rope border. But if you reach out to Sunrise Yacht Products in the description box below, they'll help you find the right nets for you and your vessel. The nets are our favorite place to hang out on the boat. It feels closer to the water than anywhere other than actually being in the water. And if you're not a sailor, they also have an architectural line, which you can get so creative with in your backyard. The material is very breathable, so it's much better than a hammock. I can find my babies. Where are my babies? <laughs> my man. Are you hungry? Should we go get some food? How art thou? Very good. How are you? Good. Just said goodnight to Jamie and Ellie. They're sleeping on the boat right now because if we were to sleep on the boat with the kids and try and 
fix all the stuff we're fixing, it would just be <laughs> an absolute pigsty. They love to tip out all their toys everywhere, so we're better off up here. The room up there. Tomorrow we're going to provision, Ellie and I, and the boys are going to fix some more things. And then the next day Forrest comes, and then we're off. So yeah, today was a, a success. what people are doing in here and not just a slide form. In three weeks to money right now, stay fleet. Okay, so that's probably not gonna happen. You, you probably need a plan B. Ellie and I are headed to the shops to provision for five adults. Who gave us this job? I don't know. <laughs> Nine. Two nights a week. Two. Okay, so there's 18 a week. Two a week. Okay. Right? No. <laughs> How are we gonna go down that ramp? I'm terrified. <laughs> Can you help us? Why is he not gonna like this? Because there's too much stuff. He has a fear of stuff, Riley. Okay, we're good. We're good. Our plan to relocate worked. Next step is to move the nest to the dock somewhere. Riley and I spent five years sailing, just the two of us, until we had our first child, Lenny, and he turned one and started walking. We decided that it was a wise move to finally find some crew on board to help out. Even though it's been years now of provisioning for a bunch of us, it still somehow makes me dizzy, but we always get by somehow. Actually, I used to have a provisioning list on our old boat, but I don't know what ever happened to that. So if there's any spreadsheet sailor girls out there that would like to email me their provisioning list to go off, I'd be forever grateful. Go and how was your day with dad? Uh, good. No. Was it good? Yes. Yeah. Okay, what did you do? Nothing. Come on, what did you do? Nothing. That's not a good answer. I was walking with dad and then I was walking with dad and then I missed him and then, and then dad would pick up on me and then, and then, and, and then, then what? Some was cheating to me and then, and then I bring the, the whole school to me. Okay, sounds like a fun day. Guys, uh -oh. everyone go in, go, go, go. Lenny, can you push number two? That's enough, darling. Just that number two. Good boy. <laughs> Thank you. Are you gonna do the old split, the split jump this morning, Forrest? Oh, yeah, now go, cowboy. <laughs> Last time Forrest mounted the point of this ammo. <laughs> Take the center there, yeah? Oh my god, you're inside. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. What's happening, Jamie? They've gotten so much bigger. Have they? So we're just, oh, they have. And they're All going right. to a new home. Okay. Yeah, bye we're bye. gonna move them up to the trees up there. Oh, it's Jamie gonna do the split jump. Oh, come on. <laughs> Look at these mangoes. Who got the mangoes? What do you think, darling? Yeah. Do you know where we're going? Where? Australia. Australia. <laughs> and to Bali. And to Bali. Where are we going? We're actually going up a big river where there's elephants and orangutans. What? And a tiger. Maybe. And crocodiles. And crocodiles. Yeah. And elephants. Yeah. And a cheetah. Maybe. Pretty nice, isn't it? This was a very special moment for us. For me, I'd been planning this for three years or more even before the build began. I'd spent so much time and energy on this project and for Elena, she told me it was the first time that she felt truly free on our vessel that she'd helped design and create. It was now working, we were the captains and we could do whatever we wanted. With enough provisions, we could sail to Patagonia or Japan or just around the corner if we wanted to. There really is no other feeling like it in the world. 
Bon voyage, mother Darwin told me to throw my banana skin from out here. He's like, I want to do that. <laughs> and he's coming and he was trying to take my, my good bit of banana. I was like, hang on a little bit. Chill out. He's going to have to go though. He's getting pretty excited, I think. You are? Oh. Woo! Nice work, Darwin. Good, we're off. There's a breeze. The sun has covered up just a little bit, so I'm not sweating anymore, which is nice. This is perfect sunburn weather, though. It is. Don't, yeah. don't, uh, don't cool? get lulled into a false sense of security pants. The past few days have been mayhem just to get out, get unpacked here on the boat. We're still unpacking. We have got the best crew. I'm not. Have I said that enough? Probably not. Uh, I'm just so excited to be hanging out with these guys. Like how awesome, we like we get to take our boat with people we love, love. and want to hang out with. Yeah, it's amazing. It's... I've, I've been as excited about that as I have been about anything else recently. Yeah. It's, a, it's a different dynamic on board. We haven't always done that and I'm really, really enjoying it. It's freaking epic. It feels like Christmas a little bit. But we are fully stocked and we can go off grid and survive for a very, very long time. How was your last few days? Uh, well, I was looking after the kids whilst you and Ellie did the provisioning. So I've just been trying to connect a bit more with Lenny, to be honest. Like, I've been over all the boat jobs with everyone, but the furling drum for the stay sail is in the Philippines because we thought that we would be there by now. So we need to rendezvous with that piece of equipment before we can have a stay sail with which to sail in really heavy weather, which means we'll be picking light winds, which is what I would have done anyway. So we're kind of fine. That's so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're free and we're working. Join us next week for a phenomenal sail as we island hop the ever enchanting island of Borneo towards this river. And of course, get ready for the inevitable drama.